Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see how to become a data engineer. So essentially, we are going to see what are the skills needed to become a data engineer. So this is like one of the most requested video in the terms that I get a lot of LinkedIn messages around this area. So I thought, let's make a video on it. So before moving on, do remember to connect with me on the LinkedIn in case you have any doubts. I will leave the link in the description box and also you can follow me on the Instagram as well. So let's move ahead and see exactly what do we have. So when we talk about the skills for a data engineer, the very basic minimal skill that has to start that has to be started with is the database or a data warehouse. So this is something very basic. Everybody should be aware of this. Now, when I talk about databases, I have segregated it into the three areas, cloud, non-cloud and NoSQL. So when we talk about cloud, so essentially right now everything is on cloud. So whichever job description you will see, you will definitely find, you know, in the 90% of the jobs, you will always see the requirement for a cloud database or a NoSQL database. So that is why it is very important to have a good grip on these databases. Now, remember that there are n number of skills, right? There are n number of tools and technologies. So I'm not putting all of them over here, right? You just need to focus on the ones which are in high demand. So whatever I have put in these slides over here, those are the ones which are in high demand, which will be really helpful for you even in the near future to get you a very good job. So when you talk about cloud, Snowflake is, you know, something that you should know. Similarly, Amazon Redshift, your Azure Synapse or the BigQuery. So these four are the top ones which are in good demand. Knowing any two of them is very good, right? If you know any two of these cloud data warehouses, that is very good. There is no need to understand all four of them in detail. That's OK. It's OK if you can do that. But for any job, two of them should be good enough. Now, similarly, when you talk about non-cloud ones, you have SQL Server, MySQL, and PostgreSQL. Now, it is an expectation that even in your college days, you would have actually understood SQL Server, MySQL, writing SQL queries, what exactly it is about. So it was good to have a knowledge of any one of these non-cloud databases as well. Now, similarly, you have no SQL databases, MongoDB, Apache Cassandra, Cosmos and DynamoDB. So these four are the ones which are most commonly used, right? Here, if you have knowledge of two of the databases, it's very good, right? Let's say you know MongoDB, you know Cosmos, it's good enough. Similarly, you know Cassandra, you know Cosmos, it's good enough. So no need to learn all four of them in one go. Extra knowledge is also always helpful, but you know, for to get a good job and to get a good understanding of the data engineering, two of them would be good enough. Now, similarly, when you talk about languages, I have mentioned only those languages which are actually used and are actually, uh, you know, required by a data engineer. I can put Java, you know, XYZ, multiple languages, but, you know, especially for a data engineer, SQL, Python are the ones which are most commonly used and Scala as well. So any two of them, SQL is a mandatory scripting language that is needed. Then Python is also good and the Scala, any one of them is good to have. Both of them, it's, it's really good. Now, another thing is since you have to build the data pipelines, you have to do the transformations. In that case, you should have a good knowledge of ETL or ELT tools. So majorly as your data factory, your Spark, on the data breaks, your DBT, your AWS Glue, your Kafka, your Fitran. So these are the ones which are most commonly used ones. So right now, if you see the market is more open towards your Azure data factory, your data breaks and the DBT. And of course, for the streaming part, Kafka and Glue as well. So these are the ones which you should be aware of. At least three of them should be in good grip. So you should at least have the knowledge of three ETL or ELT tools. You should have hands on in three of these at least. Similarly, version controlling is always helpful because when you are doing development in day to day lives, you should know what is GitHub, how to use it, you know, the Azure DevOps as well as Jenkins. So this actually helps you in, you know, uh, in being a really good data engineer. 
Now, similarly, once you build the pipelines, you need to deploy them, you know, in a systematic way, in a scheduled way. So usually the ETI tools themselves give you a scheduler. But apart from that as well, it's better to know Airflow as well as a technology. Now, similarly, as a data engineer, you sometimes you might be required to have a knowledge of analytics as well, at least the basic knowledge. So any of these Power BI, Tableau or Looker, any one of these would be really helpful. You know, if you know how to create a basic dashboard in Power BI, what exactly it is, what are the different import modes, you know, the data query and all, how can you actually develop a basic dashboard? That will be really helpful and that will help you to set apart from the other data engineers, right? Because you know analytics as well. Now, similarly, infrastructure as a code. Now, again, this is a plus point, right? And not a mandatory skill. Now, if you know infrastructure as a code, right? If you know, if you have been given a PowerShell script and you understand what exactly uh, the commands are, how, what it is trying to do, right? If you know, you know, if you know how to write a Terraform script, how to write a PowerShell, and if you, you know, in the interview, you can explain that, okay, you know, I did, you know, this and this using PowerShell, you know, I created a Terraform scripts to deploy these uh, services, for example. In that case, it gives you a edge over other uh, candidates who are interviewing for the same position. So it's better to know at least one of this, you know, if not in detail, but at least you should have a good idea. Now, similarly, when I talk about clouds, now, right now, everything is on cloud. Most of the companies are migrating to the cloud or they are already on cloud. Now, I have kept only the major players over here right now, AWS, Azure, and GCP. So from these three, it's always good to have at, at least one cloud platform knowledge in depth. At least one cloud platform. Why do we have cloud platform? What are the different services? How you can use different services in the cloud platform? This kind of information you should always have. You should have a good in-depth knowledge of these cloud platforms. One is good. And even if you have knowledge of two of them, it's really helpful. It's really good for an organization. Now, similarly, when you are interviewing for the data engineering position, concepts like data modeling. Now, see, there are multiple concepts. Now, but majorly, or most of the, you know, sub-concept will lie within these five components itself, within these five concepts. So data modeling, you should have an understanding of the data modeling. Now, most of the things will come inside. Like, there will be a lot of things, your snow, star scheme or snowflake scheme, or multiple things will come inside this data modeling. Now, similarly, lake house, concept of the lake house. Why do we have lake house? What is the data lake? What is the delta table? So things like that. Now, similarly, batch processing and stream processing. As a data engineer, you might be required to process the data in form of batches in one go, right? Or maybe the stream. Right. As soon as the data arrive, you would want to process it. Now, you should have a hands on, a very good hands on and knowledge on both these two concepts. Similarly, the knowledge of big data file formats and how to process them. Similarly, continuous integration and continuous development. Now, this is also something that you should know. You should have developed a CI CD pipeline as well in your projects. You should have an understanding. You should have a hands on on CI CD as well, because in most of the project, in the companies, they also require you to develop CICD at one or the other moment. It gives you a very good edge over other candidates. So I hope you understood what are the different skills that I have mentioned over here, specifically for the data engineers. I hope uh, you understood this. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section. And thank you so much for being till here. But do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channels. Thank you so much.